Welcome back to the All Bike Update. Today, we are taking a look at the rocket from Ecotrick. Before we get too deep into it, some of you are probably just here for an overview, so let's hit some of those big specs. The rocket comes with a 500 watt motor, a 36 volt 12.5 amp hour battery, huge 26 by 4 inch tires, a top speed of 20 miles per hour, and an estimated 15 to 23 miles per charge. Oh yeah, and it's priced at about $1,000. First, let's talk about the looks. So the Ecotrick Rocket has this somewhat aggressive mountain bike style about it. However, with the frame geometry, it is sort of an upright ride. For me, I really like the color palette on this one. We've got this mostly black with orange, blue, and white. Nothing really stuck out to me as far as being off-brand as far as the colors that they selected here. Even though it does have that mountain bike style to it based on the components that we have here, this is something that's probably going to handle light trails fairly well. I took them on a few and it handled them well but also something where you're not going to want to take this down any sort of crazy mountain bike trails or off of jumps or anything like that. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. The Rocket is a bit of a larger bike, so me being that 510, 511, it was a pretty good fit. However, I probably wouldn't go any shorter than 5'8", maybe 5'7", but probably about that 5'8 range as far as height goes. I believe on the website it's listed as being able to handle people a little bit shorter than that. However, with the geometry we have here on these big wheels, I feel like that would be kind of a difficult bike to handle for somebody who's a little bit smaller than that 5'8". Let's go over some of those geometry measurements. We've got a 19-inch reach, a 31-inch standover height. Again, just kind of highlighting my point of this is a bike for maybe somebody that's a little bit taller than average or tall. Minimal saddle height of 26 inches and a maximum saddle height of 32 inches. And those handlebars we measured in at 28 inches wide. So the bike, again, is a little bit bigger. We've got a 46-inch wheelbase here and a 76-inch length overall. And if you're unsure about some of those measurements, there's plenty of good videos on YouTube where you can figure out how to find those measurements on yourself and how to match those up with the right bike for you. Next, let's talk about the motor. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a 500 watt motor. Now this is an Ecotrick branded motor, similar to the other bikes that we have been reviewing in the recent past. And similar to those, I don't really have too many complaints. They seem to operate exactly how you'd expect a rear hub motor to operate. We didn't have excessive road noise. We didn't have any issues with it not accelerating or accelerating too fast. I felt like they were all tuned fairly decently coming straight out of the box. Next, let's talk about the battery. The battery on the rocket is 36 volts, 12.5 amp hours. That's giving us about 450 watt hours here. Now that's a little bit smaller when we compare it with some of the 48 volt batteries that we have reviewed in the past. But if getting that extra 10 to 12 miles of range is not that important to you based on how you're going to use this bike, what you're going to use it for, then the price trade-off might be worth it here for you. But that's up to you and your budget and how you plan on using this bike. And the battery, like I mentioned, is not too bad. It's kind of right in the middle there as far as a recharge time, six to seven hours for a full charge if you run it till it's gone. We do have removable keys, which is a big plus from me. I always comment on it. So it's nice that we can lock the battery on there, take the keys off, and then we don't have to worry about the keys hitting us or us kicking the keys, especially where this battery is mounted. That would be a real issue if the keys weren't removable, but they are. So it's awesome. And once your battery's fully charged, you should be able to get anywhere between 15 to 23 miles. Next, let's talk about the brakes. So we have mechanical disc brakes here as opposed to hydraulic disc brakes. Again, looking at that price, looking at what they were trying to do with it, makes a lot of sense to me on this bike. Though it looks big and fast, it really only goes up to that 20 miles per hour. So having mechanical disc brakes, not a huge deal for me on this bike. We do get the name brand having those Tektro Aries on there, so that's nice to see. And like I said, not a big deal, mechanical versus hydraulic on this particular bike. However, if we're looking at upgrades, maybe that's something we could see upgraded to hydraulics in the future. The handles up here are these Ecotrick branded brake levers, and they do have that little inlay of rubber, which I'm a big fan of. Again, I usually talk about the longevity. I'm not sure if this is going to be a long-term solution here or if there are replacement pads or anything like that. However, it is nice if you can do a little bit of fingertip braking here to have that extra grip. Next, let's talk about the gears. So the Rocket comes equipped with this Shimano SIS Index Shifter. You guys know I'm a big fan of this one. Super easy to use, not complicated, easy, E-A-S-Y. 
It is a seven speed bike and that Shimano shifter is connected back here to this Shimano tourney derailleur. The bike also comes with a derailleur guard. So that's real nice to see. So if we are taking this on some lighter trails, brushing up against some of those brushes or trees or rocks or, you know, whatever sort of trails you got around, having that little bit of protection is nice. Next, let's talk about the extras. The only extra that I would consider to be an extra is the bell. Now this bell does come with all of the Ecotrick bikes. I normally don't put them on there, although with this one, there is plenty of good places to install it. So I'll count it as an extra here. We don't have fenders on this bike. We don't have lights either in the front or in the back. Again, looking at the price point, this thing's at, at that $1,000 range. Maybe that makes sense. But I think there's plenty of room to improve. Or even if Ecotrick wanted to offer an upgrade package for an extra, you know, whatever cost that would be to throw on some fenders and a front light. Those two things I feel like would be really good additions to this bike. Next, let's talk about the essentials. So every Ecotrick bike comes with this user manual. Now inside this user manual, it has all of the bikes and the variations to the different components they use, such as the screens. The bike also comes with all of the things you need to put together except for a Phillips head screwdriver. Now that's been a common theme with the Ecotrick setup box that you get. This is something I'm hoping they can work on because it's just one tool. You know, there's plenty of ways to throw in you know, just a little something because most of the time it's only needed to adjust both the front and rear reflector or the lights if you have them on that particular bike. So I think that'd be a good upgrade across the board, adding in a small screwdriver because then at that point you have everything you need to put together all in one box and it just makes it up that much simpler. The bike also comes with a charger and two keys. Next, let's talk about the suspension. The Ecotrick Rocket is a hardtail, meaning that we have suspension up here in the front forks and no suspension in the rear. So the front fork suspension we have up in the front, it does have quick adjustment knobs here, which is nice. We like to see when we've got a little bit of control here. Now these front forks, they're not the best. Again, as I mentioned in the intro, not something you're going to want to take off jumps. That's just not what they were designed to do. Even though we don't have any rear suspension, adding to the overall suspension of the ride is going to be these big 26 by 4 inch tires. Now with these tires, they do have a max PSI of 20 or 1.4 bar, and you could probably mess around with those depending on the terrain you're going on, some softer sand or snow, things like that. You might want to let out a little bit of air. However, you know, just know you got a little bit of room to play with there. The other part of the suspension is going to be the saddle. So we've got this Selle Royal saddle up here. Nothing too impressive about it. it. Fit me all right. No real complaints here. But it's definitely a lower tier seat that does the job. Next, let's talk about the controls. So up here on the left, we have this three button setup. We've got our up arrow, down arrow, and our mode button. And then right here in the middle, we've got this S900 display, something we're very accustomed to seeing on e-bikes. It shows us a few things such as the battery level, the total trip distance, total distance, our current speed, it's going to show us our level of pedal assist and errors, if any. And one nice feature on this one is we do have this USB charging port here in the bottom. Now this runs off of the battery, which is nice. And looking at maybe doing some of your own personal upgrades, if we wanted to get a front light that also recharged off of USB, that would be pretty handy because then we could be tied in directly to the battery of the bike, as opposed to swapping out triple A's, double A's, whatever, you know, other batteries take. And that's going to do it for our overview on the Ecotrick Rocket. Let's go ahead and take this out to the streets. See what she can do. All right, guys, we are outside for the ride test on the Ecotrick Rocket. Let's go ahead and turn this on. That's an airplane. It's not the bike starting up there. Okay, so it's going to start off in pedal assist level one, and we are in the lowest gear. So let's turn the pedal assist off, and let's pedal this around as if it were a bike. Our first gear is pretty nice, easy breezy, and we'll shift up to second. Nice shift to second. Good shift to third. Good shift to fourth. A little harder into fifth, but not too bad. And then I'd like to point out here, we can actually see our miles per hour here on the screen, which is nice. Some screens, you know, depending on how the bike is set up, won't show you how fast you're going unless you're using the motor. So the fact that we can see how fast we're going here is pretty nice. Let's go into six. Six is pretty good. And into seventh. And seventh was pretty good. So right at the box, the Gearing is not too bad. Let's go ahead and stop over here and put it in pedal assist level one. 
And let's check out what this thing can do. So the brakes on here, they are a little bit loose. Definitely something we could go and tighten up. I'm just not doing that for the purpose of this review, just so you know, like right out of the box. You know, they're a little loose and that will probably, you know, vary between models. All right, so pedal assist level one. Just going down to second there. All right, nice and easy. Chase about that seven miles per hour. Pedal assist level two. All right, that 10 miles per hour. Pedal assist level three. 11, 12, and pedal assist level four. So from three to four is a pretty big jump. I could feel it really getting a little extra room to it when we were uh, going from third to fourth there. Gonna adjust this camera real quick. And then let's do pedal assist level five. And this is a class two bike, so it is gonna cut us off there at that 20 miles per hour. I feel the motor wanting to give me a little bit more though, so maybe a little unfortunate that the uh, controller's limiting us here. I feel like the, the engine wants to run a little bit. But keeping up with this 20 miles per hour is very easy. Heading into uh, quite a headwind actually. Can't really uh, hear myself, so I'm sorry if I'm yelling a little bit more than normal. You know, and these shocks combined with these, you know, big four inch tires, they really do make this a pretty smooth ride. And again, those brakes, you know, they, they're not awful. I mean, I can definitely stop. I don't feel like it's unsafe. Just something that, you know, if I was gonna keep this bike long-term, then something I would definitely tighten up for sure. So let's go ahead and we will put it in pedal assist zero. Now when we're pedal assist zero, the throttle does not work, but if we wanna get that full gambit of the throttle, we can put it in pedal assist level one. And that is not gonna do it. That's gonna take us to our five, six miles per hour. Now some throttles, as long as the pedal assist is on, you will get the full gambit. But with this one, we can control how fast that's gonna go. So now it's gonna go up to that nine, 10, 11, 12, the third to fourth. With the throttle a little less noticeable, I think, the, the switch from third to fourth. And then finally, pedal assist level five, throttle only. 20 miles per hour. Now the bike doesn't come off as too sporty. The ride is very smooth. And you know, we could probably add some, like a seat post suspension, something like that. That may just kind of add to the overall, you know, comfort of the ride. But honestly, you know, this saddle is not too bad. The way that the front fork suspension came set up was honestly pretty nice for just cruising around on these sort of trails. Yeah, don't really have too many complaints. It would be nice down here on the bottom. You can see this readout. Um, it will show us if we have any errors or anything. So with this one, it's not gonna show us our wattage, which would be cool. But we do get you know to know if there's any errors, which that makes troubleshooting really nice for the brand and EcoTrick, you know, in, the, in this instance. So if we got an error, you know, 002, they can look it up. They know exactly what that means. So nice to have that pretty easy access for troubleshooting, but It'd be cool if you know we could maybe switch to see how much wattage we're, we're pulling here. So I was trying to skid there. Can't really do it with the brakes the way they're set up, but we do get a nice controlled stop, which is nice. I mean, I, sometimes I like to slide, you know, but hey, you don't always get your want. You don't always get your want. I mean, you don't always get what you want. Yeah, that's it. I heard it come out of my mouth and I was like, that doesn't sound quite right. So as far as motor noise goes, the motor noise is pretty quiet. Can't hear it out there in the wind for sure. But a nice smooth ramp up up to that 20 miles per hour. 
not a whole lot of motor noise coming off here. And even the tires, they're a little bit different than some of the other fat tires that we get. And I'm not exactly sure the tread wise how they're different, but they just don't seem to be making as much noise as some of those big old knobbies do that we, uh, we get from some of the brands. You know, so it could be a pro, it could be a con, is what it is. The other thing that I like about this bike is there isn't really a delay between pedal assist and throttle. So if you're going, you know, pedal assist and then you want to stop and use the throttle, you can go right in between, seamlessly in between the two, which is nice. Uh, something I like, because I do that a lot. Let's see, riding it no-handed. Oh, like a dream, baby, like a dream. So the balance is pretty good. I find myself leaning back just a little bit, but I do have the saddle down quite a bit. And that's just because with these big tires, sometimes the geometry doesn't really make sense to have the, the saddle at a good spot for a proper seating position and then your feet are off the ground. So that's, in my case, that's what it is. So right now the saddle is a little bit, I would say a little bit short, but you know, fairly comfortable ride either way. And just know that you, know, you can adjust that and kind of dial that in for you. So yeah, she rides one handed, uh, handles really well, motor's nice and quiet. I don't really have a lot of complaints. You know, like I'd mentioned, I like the style of the bike. I like that we get these, you know, quick adjust front fork. That's awesome. So really a big fan of kind of the whole setup they got going on here. So I guess maybe I probably touched on it already, but let's talk about kind of what scenarios this bike would be good for. Now I've just been cruising around, you know, on some, you know, some, some back alleyway trails and the street obviously, and it handles itself really well. Um, earlier, when I went to go shoot all of the, uh, the slow-mo shots, as you saw earlier, I had to take you know, some different kind of trails. I went down into this little, I guess it's supposed to be a retention pond. There's no water in there, so it's just a, re a retention, I guess. Um, and it handled itself really well going downhill. Now, you know, I kind of cheated and went down a little bit of a 45, so I didn't you know, just nosedive off into it. And then it was able to, you know, work its way out of there fairly easily. Again, kind of going up at like a 45 degree angle, not just going head on up that embankment. So yeah, all in all, fairly, uh, fairly decent bike for the price. Now, when we look at some of these components, you know, we've got mechanical disc brakes. Um, we would like to see those, you know, maybe some hydraulic Tektros would be nice. Even some, you know, hydraulic zooms, that would be cool. Don't really have too many complaints about the setup. I kind of like the, you know, the simple three button setup over here. Nice big LCD on this side. Um, personally, I like color displays and that's kind of a debate, you know, between color displays and LCDs. But for me, I like, you know, I like the, just the, the grayscale version of them. No, I like the color version of them. I don't even know what I like. I prefer the color ones. This one is not color, uh, but the, you know, that's a debate. Some people like the, the grayscale. I prefer the color ones. You gotta know what you believe in, you know? You gotta know what you're fighting for. So I'm back here, no handed on the trail, pedal assist level five. Probably not super advised, but you know, handling itself really well. Those nice big four inch tires really help with the, you know, the balancing. Yes, I'm trying to skid, I can't even skid. So yeah, you know, it would be nice also if we got some front lights. You know, we're not, we don't have a front light or a rear light on here, we just have that front reflector and rear reflector. So that would be something that would be cool to see upgraded, you know, get those integrated into the battery. Um, you know, just small little things here and there, but if you're just looking for a bike and you don't plan to do a lot of night riding and you know, stopping isn't necessarily like life or death, say if you were doing some, you know, some bike parts or things like that, mountain biking wise. Uh, it's really not bad. That is going to do it for our review of the Ecotrick Rocket. If you want to know more, I'll have a link to Ecotrick's website down below. If you got any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys and we will catch you 
on the next one. <laughs>